South African anti-apartheid hero Desmond Tutu dies aged 19. But the uh, death, of course, uh, we will be taking a look at his life and the fight against apartheid. What becomes of South Africa? Also on The Breakfast, railway operators ignores government's free ride directives and sells tickets at inflated prices. And as always, we take a look at the papers this morning for a quick review of the biggest stories making headlines across Nigeria. Great to have you on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwa. And I am Messi Bopo. Happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays uh, that we don't get, but happy holidays regardless. It's a good thing, you know, seeing uh, less traffic across Lagos this morning um, on a public holiday and, of course, in the Christmas uh, period. Um, so, of course, welcome once again, and we hope that we have a very, very interesting Monday. We always like to start with some of the biggest stories and biggest conversations across the country. And yesterday, Sunday, of course, uh, Christmas services across Nigeria celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. But there was something in particular uh, that makes our first and second top trending stories this morning. The first one was in Kaduna State, where Muslims uh, did attend Sunday service to celebrate with Christians and, of course, to push you know, for unity across Nigeria. Um, which was very interesting to see um, a couple of those pictures and a couple of those people. There was even pictures of videos, rather, of uh, persons dressed in the Father Christmas outfit but doing the Muslim prayers. Mohamed Salah, uh, the uh, Liverpool footballer, also made the news because of his uh, Christmas uh, uh, photo with his family. And so these were some of the things that, yes, you can see that on your screen. I don't know who's on that uh, uh, who's in that picture, though? I don't know if that is Jesus or Jesus' uncle. Uh, but <laughs> you can see that on your screen. Muslims, yes, that's the picture. Who Who's that on, on the on, in the frame? I really don't know. You know, the, the, the conversation surrounding whether that's Jesus or not, uh, we were just in the movies. I mean, who is this white guy? <laughs> I mean, it's something to laugh about. That was also, you and know, why you put on weight? Uh, <laughs> some people, no, let's not even go there because I'm sure that <laughs> we can actually just have a great time with this. I this mean, one is a little chubby. That's, that's my point. <laughs> you know, some people said that uh, uh, <laughs> it's Jesus' birthday, apparently. He's added some weight and all of that. <laughs> I mean, that's on a lighter note, but, you know, the internet has actually broken uh, with a lot of comic comments, uh, if you look at that, especially with that particular picture. But let's even get to the crux of the matter. I mean, the, you know, the most important thing there is the fact that um, you could see that Muslims at attended service, which, you know, to some extent is also part of the tradition from time to time, you yeah. get to see that happen. And, and that's why I think that we're actually, we should be moving towards, you know, society where we, we can tolerate ourselves. I Absolutely. mean, where we can tolerate religious difference. Uh, the fact that you believe your, your Buddhist, whatever it is that you believe in, doesn't necessarily make you, you know, a bad person. Better I should be able or, to tolerate. Yeah. And so I'm not trying to even, you know, force our religion on anybody's throat. The most important thing is the fact that we are Nigerians, and that should always be the watchword. So whether or not you are from, you know, the south or the east or the west or the north, and whether or not you're Christian or Muslim or you're traditionalist, and whatever it is, yeah. The, we, we should be able, you know, to put out all of that religious difference. It, and come. It, it, so it, it was a beautiful uh, thing, but I hope it translates into, you know, actual peace. And we staying together, not just a show of, uh, you know, one-off thing. It's know. really mostly, you know, about encouraging these people who, you know, made this move, you know, to continue to spread that message of, you know, of mm -hmm. unity, you know, um, across uh, the country. Um, regardless of religious differences, you know, there should be more religious tolerance, there should be more, you know, acceptance and understanding, you know, that we may uh, believe in different religions, you know, have uh, different uh, uh, type of religious books, but, you know, the, the most important thing is love and, and unity and, and um, um, on understanding, you know, of, um, you know, our differences. They, they always describe Nigeria as a place that has um, they, 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 that thing when they say unity now, diversity and some mm. of all of that. So it's a great move. You know, what's important is that these persons continue to spread that same message because there's those who also do not agree. And if you look at the backlash at the Mohammed Salah picture, 
uh, you will see that there's a lot of people who, a lot of Muslims who don't even agree, you know, with this idea, with celebrating Christmas, with, you know, with celebrating with their Christian brothers and sisters. And so this message needs, and pictures like this, except that, I don't know, that Jesus picture didn't work, but <laughs> moves like this need to be encouraged, you know, and people need to do more of such in, um, across the whole country, you know, in the north, in the south, east and west. Everybody needs to be on the same train and continue to do the same thing. I don't know much, you know, about, and this might be an on popular opinion. I don't know much about Christians going into the mosque you know, to celebrate Salah, but I know that Christians at the same time, um, you know, um, do not have, you know, a lot of those issues, you know, with regards to religious intolerance. There's a lot of people who welcome their Muslim brothers and sisters. They um, do all they possibly can to ensure that, you know, they understand that we are one. Um, and so it's a, it's a great thing, and you know we should encourage it as a people and as a country, um, right from top to bottom, from the president all the way down to you know the, the you know common Nigerian. Everyone should have the same message and the same energy around um, religious celebrations um, every time. Mm. And yeah. you know the, the ability to you know look at everyone as one. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. And for Mosala, that, that, that's always a tradition for him, and he constantly comes. Uh, that comes with a lot of you know back uh, lashing and what have you the comments would always be there but i'm sure that you know if you look at the quran not that i'm you know a great student of the quran but you also see even if the quran did not categorically state uh talking about christmas and what have you but he said that you should be compassionate and treat people right uh, of other religion and, and and i always say that the tenet of christianity and you know um the islamic religion if you look at it at the same uh, we're talking about love and that's the most important thing respect yes. respect for one another treat people humanity and that's all that's about yeah. so it doesn't really matter whatever you believe in. it doesn't matter what, what you you worship and who you call it's okay as long as you're a human being and we're nigerians we should be able to treat ourselves right yeah. so it's a good one i hope that we sustain this you know practice. absolutely the, the the most um you know the biggest you know talking points you know from all of this where the where this picture which we showed you and of course the mosala picture and the video of um the uh you know father christmas you know doing his muslim prayers um, you know, I think there was about two or two different videos like that, you know, that emerged uh, over the weekend. But it was great to see. And then also, uh, still talking, of course, in the same, you know, space, uh, the Shiites also uh, were part of the celebration of Christmas. You know, they attended some church services also um, to, you know, celebrate with their Christian brothers and sisters and to also pretty much share the same message. And that's also a very, very beautiful picture uh, that you see right there. You know, for, you know, a couple of people, they might see it as, you know, uh, a theatrics and whatnot. But for me, what's most important is, the, you know, is the, 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 the motive behind it and you know the energy around it you know and a lot, the fact that a lot of people will you know see it as a way of uniting religious um, um, religions across Nigeria you know the most the, one of the biggest challenges that we have as a country is mm -hmm. the things that divide us you know mm -hmm. politics religion, religion. tribe and the, and, the, and the likes and so these you know moves here and there by these persons whoever it is that brought up these ideas and ensure that they went ahead to do it um, should be celebrated and they, they should continue to push for similar um, actions across the country, um, including in Muslim holidays and, um, and and the likes. Yes, and and I think we should also try um, a little bit of acceptance for traditional traditionalists. Uh, yes, because, because you have a lot of people who, I mean, there are a lot of persons who don't believe in Christianity. There are a lot of persons who don't believe in whatever, I mean, different religion. Of course, you know, in Nigeria have two, I mean, main major, relig yeah. major religion. So you're talking, you know, Christian or you're Muslim. But you also have traditionalists. You have a lot of people. And there are some people who don't believe in all of that. They're not Christians. They're not this. They're not that. But they're traditionalists. And yeah. we should be able to respect people's choices. It doesn't make them less of a human being. Absolutely. Whether they believe that there's a stone and that's the stone that gives them, they pray to a stone, they believe that it's a stone that made them, it's fine. It's really, you know? so, so, so for a lot of those religions, you know, and that's, that's where, um, you know, a lot of people get it wrong. You know, most people believe that there is that one God. It is the, you know, path through which they assess that God that differs. You know, for Christians is different, for Muslims is different, for the Grail message, um, you know, members is different, for the Ekankas uh, it's different, for uh, the Rosicrucians is different, for the traditionalists is different. And it's, it's really just the, mo uh, the pathway through which you assess that God that you believe in. But most importantly, you know, is the belief that there is a God. And even those who don't believe that there is a God, um, we should continue to accept, you know, as long as they do not in any way infringe on your own rights to practice your own religion then accept them as they are and, and not right even trying to, to you know force your you, you know how some you find some people who are believers or 
preachers who represent particular religion would try to want to force their religion yes. on other people. I, I just think that, you know, it's not supposed to be so because we are uh, free, free human beings. I mean, we're, we're human beings that are free. We have been given a mind. We have to think, uh, we can think on our own. And I'm thinking that it won't be right for us. But majorly, my concern is the reaction surrounding the fact that the Shites actually uh, visited, you know, some churches across the entire country to celebrate. Still the same thing. A lot of people are not in support. And one of the arguments that people are putting forth is that, oh, this is also uh, the fact that they are not in terms with the Sunnis. And so it's more like trying to form an alliance. Still and divisions. all of that division. So my, my point is, must we always, you know, be at that point where we look at things and we begin to say, oh, they're actually coming together. This is not just a, a one gesture. There should be an undertone. You know, we're beginning to read meanings to it. They are trying to form an alliance with the Christians, and that's because they're not in tune with the Sunnis and what have you. But if you look at it, it has always been part of their tradition. And I know that a lot of people will not support as much as you can find uh, in the Quran where they say you have to wish, um, wish um, Christians uh, Merry Christmas and what have you and all of that. But <clears throat> some of the uh, tenets, some of the uh, portions on the Quran would actually tell you how to be very tolerant, to respect them, treat them with respect, be kind to them, tolerate them and love them. And so it's still one and the same thing that we're talking about. And like you had mentioned, I'm thinking it's time that we constantly encourage all of this. I'm sure we'll go a long way in reducing all of the tension that we're faced with yeah. in the country. And just constantly we see ourselves as one. It should be a message, you know, from, you know, the spirit, spiritual and traditional and political leadership. Um, and not just, you know, a word of mouth, you know, there should be acts, you know, that you see across the country but what, what would um, put the by these persons that encourage um, unity. But where do we put the native doctors? They, who? They, well, you know, it's still, is, is you know, okay you put them in the traditionalists, you know, Yeah, space. but, but is, it, is it okay to have, you know, native doctors come to church? Absolutely. To the box? Absolutely. So, so they, I think, they, I think it's really because of Without being very judgmental about them? So I think it's really because of the notion that we have about these persons and where they get their powers from. Um, uh, but they also believe, you know, in the, in the source of their powers, you know, comes from, you know, God, I believe. So it's really just that understanding and the stereotype that we've placed on these persons. But they are traditionalists. Then, you know, every now and then you hear that, um, you hear this thing about Edo people, you know, people will make these statements that, oh, if you go, every Edo person has a, you know, an uncle that has a shrine, or, you know, or some, you know, small, small shrine in the back of the house, which is not true. Which but that's the stereotype true. that has been placed on, you know, in, on my people, basically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a stereotype that has been placed, oh you know. In the same way, when they say, "Oh, you know, you, you you know, your people fly a lot," you know, and all of that, you know, it it already has painted it in a, in a negative way. But yeah. you know, I would continue to say, you know, as long as their religion and the practice of their religion doesn't infringe on your own practice or doesn't in any way um, hurt your own practice of your religion, then let everybody be who they want to be, mm. um, and uh, we'll all be fine. All right. All right. Moving away from uh, talking about religious, um, well, or the things that happened over the weekend in churches and celebration of Christmas, let's also talk about something not very good now, and that is the fire disaster at the next cash and carry supermarket in Abuja. There, of course, was breaking news uh, sometime yesterday that the supermarket was a uh, superstore was on fire. Um, but that's not the only thing that made headlines. Initially, it was that the place was being looted um, while, um, you know, uh, fire service was, you know, still trying to sort out the fire. Yeah, there you have uh, videos of uh, the store, really, 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 really sad um, the video of the store being um, burnt. Um, but of course, you know, pictures then emerged, short videos emerged of people moving property and, and goods from the superstore, which initially seemed like these were looters because i'm sure that everyone remembers what happened in 2020 um here in lagos and a few other places um, in the country but apparently um of course uh, information reaching us much later in the day showed that these goods weren't actually looted they were saved from the fire by nigerians who ran into the superstore to see what they could salvage which is also a very brilliant thing in the spirit of christmas um you would expect because initially I was going to say that, well, you know, it's not, a, it's not peculiar to uh, Nigeria, you know, to see looters. Even in the United States, you see people looting stores. Mm. Um, but, you know, eventually this turned out to be a good story that some of the goods that were, you know, in the store were salvaged by citizens who were able to rush in and make sure that they put them uh, or bring them out. Um, we're hoping, um, of course, we'll still like to get further details and further information on, on this. But we're hoping that um, the fire service was able to at least save 
you know, the store to some extent. Now, you know, you, you know that, um, first of all, like you have mentioned, uh, very commendable of, uh, you know, the people around to be very kind. And that is part of the element of humanity we constantly talk about because, yeah. uh, you know, as humans, I would always say that we're human beings. And as long as you have that at the back of your mind, it just informs how you treat the next person and how you relate. It's all about love. It necessarily doesn't even matter who you are or what you are. But, you know, when, when it's time that you're able to show that gesture. So, great one. But my concern is, do you know that when we get to this part of a time, I mean, this period, the Yule-type period, every other time, it's serious fire outbreak. I'm not saying that fire incidents don't really happen every other time. But mostly uh, the festive period. So, you want to begin to run that check right now, entire the... the looking at the entire country, I mean, 36 states mm -hmm. and the FCT, you find out that pockets of fire outbreak here and there. Now, I, I should think that, you know, the fire service, apart from the fact that your firefighters uh, should always end back on, what's it called, sensitization. We, you know, go out there and put out that message. I don't know how to do it. Maybe the campaigns via television, via radio, what have you, go to the marketplaces and let people understand, you know, what they need to do so that we can get, not get to that point where we have a fire outbreak. Because from different things, it could just be some carelessness from the surge and what have you, the things that people need to know. So, so that it's, it's more of saying you, we need to be more proactive. So we mm -hmm. reduce the incidents and all of these fire incidents that happen. Uh, because if we constantly engage um, the people, we educate the people, we carry out these uh, campaigns and what have you, people would know what to do and what not to well. do. And we will not get to that point where we have to. And, and also, I don't know if I saw the presence of the Nigerian police because it's a good thing that, you know, the place wasn't looted and then you had people working. But usually when you have an incident, like you're expecting that you see men of the Nigerian police was around and uh, all their security agents. Well, in other countries, you would have the fire service there within minutes. And, um, you know, that, of course, it comes along with the police, you know, also within minutes. Um, <laughs> but we're Nigerian. Um, and, you know, in response to the thing that you said initially, um, Ni in Nigeria is one of the countries in the world that never learns. So we never learn any lessons. We never make any changes, um, you know, after disaster strikes. Nothing, nothing is bad enough for us as a country for us to actually learn lessons and uh, make changes. And that's why I say this. Um, it's not the first time that we're hearing of a supermarket fire. It's also not the first time that we're hearing of a market now, you know, an, an actual market uh, being burned. Mm. But you would see that nothing really ever changes with policies, with building structures, with, you know, licensing and some of all of that um, after that fire. You know, we simply just wait for the next one and then complain again. If you remember, months ago there was the Ebano fire. Mm -hmm. um, that um, I remember that I went on, on screen that morning and I spoke a little bit about the um, absence of the thing called a sprinkler system. And, you know, of course, when you're building the superstores, I'm sure that there's, you know, bodies that, um, uh, that should give you a license, that should be able to check, you know, that it is safe, um, that they have every single bit of uh, fire safety uh, mechanism in the stores. Um, Nigerian superstores, I do not believe, have... Um, adequate and you know functional fire uh, uh, systems, a sprinkler system in every store. That every time that there is a fire, it goes off, and you, en you ensure that, of course, it tries it at least does to some extent put out the fire. I don't think we do, and we simply would move on until there is the next fire disaster. Um, a superstore that will cost billions of naira should have no excuse. There's no excuse why that store should not have an appropriate and adequate um, um, uh, sprinkler system or at least fire response system, but we don't seem to make all those changes. And if you look also in the marketplaces, when there's a market fire, um, we complain. Traders, you know, complain that they've lost all their goods and whatnot. But we move on by the next week and nothing seems to change. Um, how much different is or how much more effective is the Nigerian fire service after every fire disaster? How much more effective is the building um, a framework for building a marketplace after every fire disaster? There's nothing that changes. There is no fire hydrants. There is no, you know, building the markets in a way that a fire truck can get into every single part of the market. Nothing. Absolutely nothing changes until the next fire disaster. And then we'll have the same conversation and move on. So we don't actually learn lessons. I'm expecting that every superstore in the country right now should invest. It doesn't matter how much it will cost in an effective um, sprinkler system and it may be a small fire station close to it um, but to Ra that. rather than you know just wait for you know uh, the fire service to show up yeah, usually complete. there are always several excuses why you know they can't show up and probably not have you know 
uh, in the truck or probably don't have enough water to come through and all of that. That's but I hope that we get to a point it. where, you know, all of that will be sorted. Hopefully. All right. Uh, that's, of course, our top trending stories for this uh, morning. We'll take a short break when we come back. Let's look at the major stories, making headlines across Nigeria this morning. And we will have our guest joining us uh, to share his thoughts on uh, these uh, stories. Stay with us.